I just like my heart melts when people wink at me. That's like one of my favorite things. Like it, like somebody winks at me and I'm just like, oh, like marry me. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I really wanted to talk about money during traveling. So I don't know why, but this year I have traveled without a wallet, without cash without a way to get any of it. And it's really actually <laughs> made me become really creative in how to get money. Uh, this video is about how to travel without money. Now, I know that sounds like how to travel and not spend money or how to travel and get everything for free, but this is more of like how to travel without access to your own money, not by like using somebody else for money, although some of the tips are to use somebody else for money. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that this gives you um, a little bit of confidence so that if you were to go like leave your wallet at home or be abroad and not have like a way to get money, I hope this gives you a little bit of security at least. Also, if you're, you are traveling, this is a really good video to put some systems in place so that if you find that your wallet's stolen or if you find that you left it at home, that these systems that are in place could help you so you're not freaking out and getting anxious about how you're going to get your next dollar or your next meal or your next place to stay. So uh, let's get to it. The first time I traveled without my wallet was um, I switched bags at the last minute and my wallet was in a different bag so when I got to the airport I did not have an ID I didn't have my credit card or money or anything and I actually was able to still fly if you're curious about how I was able to fly without a wallet without an ID or uh, anything any form of identification we can do that on another video but let's stick to money this time so apps help a lot so booking apps that's like booking.com, uh, Agoda, Airbnb, which you probably already have, Hotel Tonight. Put your credit card information into all of these apps before you go out and travel. There's Hostel World also. Uh, when you book on the app, you don't really need to show any form of credit card or ID. Also, if you've already booked a place in uh, like a hotel or something ahead of time, you can charge everything to the hotel, but when you check in, they do require some form of identification and uh, the only reason I was able to check in was because I was part of, I booked a part of a group and they said that they trusted me because I was part of that group. So I don't know if you'll have that same situation. Usually when you check in somewhere and you're traveling, you need an ID, but um, cross your fingers, hopefully you don't. I am very, like I use my phone for everything. I almost never take my wallet or my credit cards with me. I never use cash, so I don't have my ATM card. Those aren't habits that I have. If you have those habits, then um, maybe you will, if you get your wallet stolen or something, this is like a way that you can get money. So I would say make sure Apple Pay is set up with all of your credit cards, all of your debit cards. Usually if you lose either your wallet or your phone, you don't use lose both at the same time. So let's say if you don't have your wallet, you will have your phone. Especially in like more Western countries, Apple Pay or PayWave, any place that you see that like triple line on the register usually takes Apple Pay or PayWave. And you can just use your phone to pay for everything. I was traveling, I had my credit card, but I didn't have a debit card, and so the issue here was like I was going to some foreign countries that doesn't use credit, like credit doesn't exist there, and so I had a really hard time using my credit card at places. So um, I also couldn't get money from my credit card, except uh, at an airport where you can buy cash with credit, so I'd say that's the other option. At the airport, foreign currency exchange, buy cash with credit card if you're really desperate. You could get cash from an ATM, but you need a PIN. So I bank with Chase. The PIN gets mailed to you 10 days after you request it, and it gets it has to go to the address on your billing statement. So basically, you're not going to be there to get it. Now, if you have like a personal banker or a business banker, you can call them and say, hey, I need an emergency PIN. 
give me the number to the back office and please vouch for me because like I don't have money. So you can get an emergency pin, uh, that's for your credit card. I don't recommend, uh, I would say like exhaust the other resources because I think the interest high for cash advance is pretty, uh, interest rate for cash advance is pretty high. These are your backup plans. Let's say you're like me. You can't get your pin for your credit card. You don't have a debit card. Your cash is gone from what you bought at the airport. And yeah, basically. So here are your backup plans. Find a US traveler and have them be your ATM so you can Venmo them. Other countries, I say US because other countries don't really have like Venmo. You could maybe PayPal, but US would be easiest and they get you the money from the ATM. Uh, you can ask your hotel for uh, to charge your credit card on file for exchange for cash. And then anything that you do at your hotel, you just put on your credit card. You can pay for cash at the airport with your credit card. So um, you, you don't need a pin to do this, you just need a signature. So you just hand them your credit card and you tell them how much cash you want and what currency. Have a family or friend wire money to you, or you can Western Union yourself money. So this is actually what I did. It does take four days, but the key is you have to make sure that the Western Union that you're basically sending money to, just make sure that the address is in the same city that you're picking up from. So if you're like backpacking, and you're not going to be somewhere, and you don't really know where you're going to be, wait to send the money um, until you know that you're going to be in a certain city for, you know, like a day or two, and then pick it up there. Um, I had no issues picking up. They pay you in U.S. dollars, um, so then you have to go to, like, a, a currency exchange, usually jewelry stores, uh, banks. Jewelry stores are, like, gold traders, give you the best exchange rates. Um, that's what I found. Okay, so if if you're going to be traveling for a long time, your bank can send you a debit card, but the only thing is is they don't know how long the transit time is going to take, so you're gonna have to be somewhere for like a month or longer. Uh, so if you are, if you're living somewhere, then just have the bank send it to you, send you a debit card. In China, you could just have like a friend of yours put money into your WeChat. So like download a WeChat account, uh, make one and then tell your and then become friends with like one of your friends and ask them to transfer money into your WeChat account. So when I say these countries don't don't use credit, it doesn't mean that they don't use electronic payments. Um, it just means that there is no credit. It's all cash or it's all debit. It's all checking like direct. It's no credit card stuff. Also, one more thing about the Western Union is. Just make sure that like your name is the exact same on whatever ID you're using to pick up. So like if you're using your passport, like just make sure that your name is the same. Those are all of the <laughs> that kind of went by really fast. But those are all of the things that I learned about uh, about money and how to get it. I would say the less the least stressful and easiest ways are like I mean I. I'm telling you, I used, I exhausted every single one of those resources, but it wasn't until I met somebody, a US traveler, who was willing to be my ATM to hold me over until I was able to figure out the Western Union thing. Like those two things, in addition to like buying a little bit of money at the airport just to get me to my hotel and then meeting somebody there and then doing the Western Union thing. Like those are kind of the things that have saved me. When I was traveling in the US and I didn't have my wallet, Apple Pay saved me. But then again, like you can't only rely on Apple Pay. So just make sure you take all of these into consideration when you're traveling abroad. This is how you kind of protect yourself from being cashless or being moneyless. And these are hopefully some ideas that get like that you can take with you when you travel just in case something bad happens or something goes wrong. Um, this is what I've learned and this is like the easiest. So let's just recap. Sign up for those apps, download those apps, especially for travel and put all your credit card information in there. Make sure you ask your credit card company for a pin before you leave. And if you can't get one, then ask the back office for an emergency pin. You can even probably, 
Uh, you can call or you can go in if you need an emergency pin. Just sign up for a Western Union account. Get that all signed up and that way if something happens, you can right away on the same day just like send money to yourself for you to pick up in four days. Your wallet or Apple Pay or whatever you use, make sure all your cards are entered in there. So if you are in a country that uses Apple Pay or PayWave, you can just use your phone. Those are like your money safety nets for travel. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Please let me know on your comments or questions below what your uh, last minute resorts are for traveling cashless and walletless and ID-less. And stay tuned for more uh, from Posh Inc. and TIFF TV. Don't forget to check out the podcast, Posh Incredible Transformations. You can find that on iTunes. And uh, check out our website. We got a redesign. It's really cool. It looks fresh. It's hot. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, the website is poshinc.com. And uh, stay posh, everybody.